three I want to talk tonight. Each one of them has different motivations, the things that get them to do things. Each one of them has different fears, the things that keep them from doing things. And then finally, each one of them has a set of different proof points that you might want to get when you go out there to actually do a presentation to them. Let's take a look at business people. Number one, business people are highly competitive. If they're not highly competitive, they shouldn't be in business because business is competition. And I can't tell the number of times that people have said to me, oh, I'd like to use Linux, but it's too risky. And I say to them, hey, risk is business. I mean, if, if you don't want to be take risks in business, then why don't you go off and, and, and choose maybe the number two computer company in the world. Put your money on them, Digital Equipment Corporation. <laughs> Okay. Or Wang, or Pi, or Data General. You know, go with one of the established leaders. For all of you that are under the age of about 40, these are defunct computer <laughs> And at one time, every single one of them was a market leader in one phase or another, and they're gone. Oh, put all your money in the 286. There is a winner. Okay, the 286 chip. I'll lead you into the next century. <laughs> well, the Alpha. Okay, I put all my money on the Alpha. And, uh, but the thing is, everybody put their money on these things at one time. They took a risk. That's what business is about. And hopefully you choose the right business and the right risk to go with. It, one of the things you can do to get to think about this is say, well, what about your competition? What happens if your competition chooses Linux, is able to cut their costs, or is able to make a better product, and you don't because you're choosing the really safe course? You don't want to make the investment in the automobile because buggies and buggy whips are the thing that most people are using. Or your Samuel Clemens, who refused to invest in a telephone because he was putting all of his money into a linotype machine which of course, there's lots of uses for linotype type machines and things to set the newspaper. But that particular venture went broke, and of course, the telephone company for a short time made lots of money until world.com came along. <laughs> <laughs> now, business people are made up into, uh, made up into two thought patterns. And that's really, they, they when you break it down, they've only got two patterns, okay? One of them is make money, and the other is save money. That's all they care about. They don't care about the freedom of software. They don't care about the glory of, of sharing your intellectual property. They don't care about the thrill that you get as a programmer sitting down and solving a problem. They really don't care. They only care about making money and saving money. Okay. Now the next part of this is one of my favorite cartoons of all time was this cartoon of this white-haired old gent with his hair like sticking out a lot like mine, you know, but even further. Standing in a blackboard filled with equations of all types. And then there's an equal sign and then a little dollar sign. And underneath it said, the time, the day that Albert Einstein finally realized that time was equal to money. <laughs> And that's the second thing, that if you're talking to business people, you've got to get them to remember, okay? They know this stuff, but sometimes they forget. They get all involved with other things, you know, like, like, like what the majority of people is using and stuff like that. But then you have to bring them back. Now, lots of times I'll be standing in front of a group and say, you know, 4,000 business people. And I know they're business people because they go to some place like Comdex, okay? As opposed to Linux world. <laughs> but they're going to some place like Context, and I'm talking to them, and I say, how many of you people have ever had a problem with proprietary software? Now, in the magic trade, this is what is known as a forced question, okay? I know what the answer is, because I you know they're business people. Each one of them's had to do with software. Each one of them's had to do with closed proprietary software. That's what they deal with. I know that of a group of 4,000 people, 3,999 of them are going to raise their hand. You know, it's a given fact. And the only reason the last person does it is because they're asleep. <laughs> uh, 
So out of the 3,999 hands that are raised, I ask the second question. Okay, how many of you have ever taken the time to write a well-worded bug report for that problem? And because these are business people and that problem is keeping them from marching ahead with their project, ahead from making money, 3,500 hands will stay raised. Now the others are slackers. <laughs> so you say to the 3,500 people, how many of you have ever gotten back a well-worded bug, bug fix or workaround? And now all but one or two hands will go down. And I'll say, not you, Bill. <laughs> but even without Bill, I mean, it's true, all the hands will go down. Maybe two or three will stay raised. And again, I know this is what's going to happen. You know, if 50 people keep their hands raised, I'm amazed. But that sale's still out of 4,000 people. And to be frank about this, this is not really a case of Microsoft versus anybody else. This is closed source, proprietary, high volume, manufactured, engineered software. Now why has this happened? This happens because you have a small group of engineers, pick a number, 50, okay? And these people are working on a project that hopefully, when they get finished, they're going to stamp onto floppy disks or CD-ROMs like cookie cutters and send this out to an unsuspecting million or two million people. <laughs> These million or two million people are going to try this software out, and at least 50% of them are going to send back a bug report, okay? And then they're also going to send back a request for new functionality. And let's say that each one of these customers just sent back one bug report and one request for new functionality. That's two million email messages or pieces of paper headed the way of these 50 engineers. Now, I used to work for a large company who made computer software. I won't mention what their name is, but it rhymed with REC. Okay? And I was on the receiving end of those pieces of paper. And in every release of our operating system, we would all get together. You know, the product managers had done their, their duty of, of putting all these requests into some type of order. And we had them prioritized according to how much money we thought they would make, <laughs> or how many new licenses would we sell, or how few customers would we piss off if their particular thing didn't get implemented, okay? or how many customers we get if there was. And we'd have a list of 500, or at least in the early days we had a list of 500, after we did it a couple times, we never bothered to have any more than 60 on the list, because we knew that the engineers would come along and say, we can implement the top 30. That's it, 30 implemented, 500 on the list. Now you can guess where your problem report <laughs> or your request for enhancement was. And actually, the problem reports actually got quite a bit further up the list, but a lot of them never made it to the top. So we would go out with that release of software, and then the next year, we'd do the same thing all over again. Now, you would think that your, your request would maybe move up the list, but no, it would, might even go down further, because other people put in their requests for functionality, their bug reports, and they were deemed to be a higher priority. This isn't just a Microsoft thing. This is closed source proprietary software. And you have to get the person you're trying to influence to understand that. We're not Microsoft bashers necessarily. It's just they make the easiest target. <laughs> okay? I think, I, I tell people, I, you know, Bill Gates and Microsoft has probably done the most for lowering the price of computing and bringing it to the masses of any other country, of any other company. Certainly they've done the most in lowering people's expectations of Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we have we have to give them that. They've done a great marketing job. And, and we can't be seen as simply people who bash them all the time. And, do it. And, and if I was talking to a group that was a mixed sort, I probably would not even be making many Microsoft jokes or anything. But I know you, you all understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> okay, 
So what you're saying to these people, now, now the next thing you have to get them to understand